Hey guys, it's Shane with Accessor Performance. Today we are coming to you live from the Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky. I am on vacation, so we are going to be doing some videos on the road, uh, change things up a little bit. So when you first walk into the museum, you're going to find this Corvette cutaway of a first gen. Um, I always love cutaways because I just love seeing the engineering that goes into how things work um, and all the little details. Here you can just see the lock mechanisms, basically everything on the car, how it works. And then you can go on the other side and see it in its function and in its form. And as we walk further into the museum, you're going to see this 50 themed area. Okay, we're going to show you some of these areas, but we're not going to show you the entire museum. We want to leave something for you guys to come and take a look at when you go to visit. Um, this area is going to be about Zora Arcus Duntov and his uh, achievements and accomplishments while working with the Corvette team. Um, his dream was always to have the rear engine Corvette that we have today, and they have made that come to fruition, as we'll see later. All right, and then we move further on. We have a 60s section. This is going to be a mobile gas station if you were to go to it in the 60s. Um, being very different than today, you're going to be in a full service area versus get out and pump your own and go get a bunch of drinks and things like that. And if you walk around the museum, the first thing you're going to notice is there's Corvette memorabilia everywhere. Um, including die cast, which is one of my favorite thing. Um, and this is just a small portion of it. Um, but as you, like I said, if you walk through the museum, there's just stuff hidden all over the place, including go-karts, a bumper car. And, uh, here we have another go-kart and then this very limited Corvette pinball machine. Um, I've never seen this before and I've been to several pinball and arcade museums including the one in Vegas that's supposed to be the largest one, and they do not have that. All right, further moving along, we're going to come into the racing area. Um, that is going to be one of the things that Corvette um, has kind of built their reputation on. They race the cars in order to make them more functional um, on the street and a better sports car. Um, this one being one of my favorites, the Blue C3. One of the cool things to know at the museum, this is a new section, and in this section they have the video wall behind cool the car that shows like you several different pictures the of the car, the also gives you information about it, what classes it ran in, that and things like right that. that one, one, this red that one being one of my favorites, I just love the bodywork on this one with the gold BBS wheels. Yep. And here we have the C4 racing vehicles yeah, these like were the basically GTA just stock BBS vehicles wheels. that they put together and, and made a racing class GTA. for yeah. so you could buy this car and you could go to the track and you could race it in the corvette challenge uh, series and we just move further and further and further through that's going to be a zr1 a c4 we got a c5 and then we have the oh, c7 no. car that was made for sema to promote the gran turismo video game um, the Corvette is on the cover of the game, but this is not that car. And then the C7 room, the C7R room that is, we have the car brought in straight from the track. It has all of the bugs and grime and tire and rubber wear all over the vehicle. Um, it's a very interesting way to display a race car. Um, it keeps the history on the car instead of polishing it all back up and making it perfect. I think this is great, and we saw Ferrari do this at the PRI show, and I loved it there. And here we have the C8 prototype. The thing to note here is the fact that if you are standing there, you can see all of those details that are on the car. It is super clear as day, but as soon as you try to photograph it, I remember the camera goes crazy the and you there. cannot see the lines. It was just so weird to stand there and hold the camera, look at the car, and then look what the camera is picking up. Then we move further on to more prototypes. Here we're going to see uh, just a few odds and ends of things that uh, were uh, thought up back in the day and then eventually would make it into production cars along the way. And here is going to be an example of the first rear engine Corvette that they came up with. Uh, this has had to have been made in the 50s or 60s. It looks like it may have been put on a C3 uh, platform and Again, this is going to be 
the, the way it started. And they called it the ugly ducking, the ugly duckling. And here you can see the inside of the car. And what's interesting to note is that there are some things like the hood that you can still see those cues today. And here we have the Corvette that was a four rotor. It basically had a Winkle engine in it, much like a Mazda, like an RX-7 or something like that. Um, again, this is going to be a rear engine vehicle. They were always trying to go towards rear engine design because they knew that eventually they were going to run out of uh, the ability to contain power with a front end platform. And here you're going to see the pinnacle of that front engine rear wheel drive vehicle, the ZR1 High Wing. Here we have a right hand drive C8. And here we are in the Corvette Sinkhole exhibit. And this is supposed to show you what it would be like if you were in the hole when the Corvettes fell down into the uh, single itself. And here is where those cars fell from. This is one of the cars unrestored from the sinkhole. As you can see, it's completely totaled, battered in every way, and uh, it's just hard to fathom how far those cars actually fell into the hole and how much damage they took. And here is the Blue Devil. This is the prototype ZR1. Um, this car they pulled out of the hole and restored it completely and put it back to its former glory. And here you can just take a look at what is in the dome now. We have several different uh, forms of race cars and pace cars and we have a car that was able to be driven by someone in a wheelchair. We just have all kinds of different things including, you guessed it, a Dodge Viper. At the Corvette um, Museum. What? The Why is there a, Cor a Viper at the museum, the you ask? Well, because of this car right here. V12. This is going to be the ZR12. This is a prototype of a 12 cylinder engine in a Corvette put into the ZR1 platform. And it was directly to go head to head with the Dodge Viper of the day because when that car came out, it really changed how people were looking at performance and what they were wanting to get from their car, especially in uh, high performance racing applications. Okay, and here we have the tag with all of the information on here. If you guys want to pause the video, you can take a read, um, but we'll just uh, keep on going. We won't uh, read it to you, obviously. Um, but the, what was really cool is I've had one of these cars and it was just neat to see that they used all the components that they could from a stock vehicle. We've got radiator so bottles, we have accessories see. and things like that. All of that was from that time. And then when we walked in the museum, we walked right past this. It looked like it was a static display, but what it turned out to be was a full motion simulator. It was very cool. It was one of the most fun things we did on the trip and it was only $10. I wish I would have went back in and did it again. That's how much fun it was. Um, I was doing a pretty good pace. I beat my son by 35 seconds and took 16th place. And I think I could have probably took first place if I had gave it a couple more goes. All right, that's going to be it for the Corvette Museum. I hope you guys like taking this trip with us through here and seeing the different cars and prototypes. If you like this kind of content, consider giving us a subscribe and hitting the like button and the bell. That way you get a notification whenever we post a new video. All right, guys, I hope you have a good weekend, and we will see you next time. Take care.